To continue these conversations about thermochemistry, next we will be discussing how to use standard enthalpies to a formation to calculate the standard enthalpy for a reaction. So we're going to be actually using Hess's law. It's an application of Hess's law. And again, a lot of calculations that require careful attention. First of all, we need to discuss what is a standard heat of formation. It's given this interesting symbol, delta H, the little zero as a superscript, is called naught. So delta H sub F naught. Standard heat of formation has that interesting symbol. You'll see it again and again here, so be ready for it. And it's the enthalpy change for the formation of one mole of its substance in its standard state from its constituent elements in their standard states. So an example here uh, is to make methane, CH4, from it, the elements in their standard state. So apparently you have to have carbon with four hydrogens. Well, where does it come from? Carbon is a solid. It's known as graphite. Sometimes it's listed that way. And then hydrogen in its standard, standard state will be just hydrogen gas, but it's going to take two moles of that to make one mole of methane. The delta HF naught standard enthalpy change the standard heat of formation for methane then is determined and known to be, and find these things in tables, minus 74.8 kilojoules. It refers to the amount of energy per mole, as usual, in this particular reaction of forming methane. All right, so we've got to double check here. We've talked about sub standard states somewhere a little bit a while back, so we've got to remember which of these substances has a standard heat of formation of zero. Well, wait a minute, these aren't compounds. These are elements. And oxygen, nitrogen, sodium, xenon are the choices. For which of these things is the standard heat of formation designed to be zero? Well, it's going to be any element in its standard state. Well, in other words, what you find it at at normal conditions of temperature and pressure. So is oxygen going to be a gas? Hmm, that looks promising. Is nitrogen going to be a liquid at standard states? Uh, no, that would have to be a gas. And is sodium going to be a gas? Um, nope, that'd be a solid. And is xenon a liquid? Oh, you'd have to really work to get xenon to be a liquid. That's also going to be a gas. It's a noble gas. So only oxygen has a heat of for standard heat of formation as a gas equal to zero. But that comes in handy at places because it, um, it's a simple value in the calculation. It's zero. Now, if we're talking about enthalpy changes for using standard heats of formation, we need to remember what it is the standard heat of formation for a specific compound might be. The liquid ethanol is the example here. Ethanol is the compound shown at the right. So there are two carbons. There's hydrogens in these parts of the molecule, a total of six of them. So C2H6 and the last atom, oops, got to change colors. That one is oxygen. So C2H6O is ethanol. And if you can interpret the diagram correctly, there's two little extra things here. These are lone pair electrons. It's an unusual diagram to include them, but um, that's what they are in this example. Now, so ethanol has to be determined on the right hand, is, is what we're looking for in this example. So ethanol is on the reactant side in those, and the product side here. And so we're looking for liquid ethanol. OK, they all have liquid ethanol. But for the formation of liquid ethanol, which of these reactions is proper? Well, um, <clears throat> if it's formation, then it better be on the product side, not these two. And then it needs to be ethanol made from the elements, the combining elements in their standard states. Well, they all have carbon as graphite. That's what the GRAPH refers to. But now we have hydrogen two different ways. Oh, well, three different ways. So we have hydrogen as a liquid. Well, I'm pretty sure that doesn't make sense. You'd have to be pretty cold to have liquid hydrogen. But do we have H2 gas or do we have six hydrogens? Well, in its standard state, hydrogen is a gas as H2. And so that leaves us with only option D, which hopefully is correct. Half of an oxygen molecule, which is going to be a gas, gives you enough oxygen for that process. So this is the proper process for which the standard heat of formation applies. There are times we'll use this, but you've got to recognize the rec correct reaction. Let's do one more example like that. So for which of these reactions occurring at a normal temperature of 25 Celsius for a standard state, which one of these reflects the heat of formation for sulfuric acid, the liquid? So it should be the elements in their standard states combining to make the correct product. 
Well, there's only three of them that have the correct product. We're not taking it apart. Reactions two and four have the sulfuric acid on the left side. That's not the intent. It's for the reaction forming, so the reaction forming H2SO4. All right, then it has to be elements in their standard states combining. So which of the remaining choices makes sense? First choice, hydrogen with sulfur and oxygen to make the liquid. Hmm, that's looking promising. Double check. Do that seem to add up? So far that looks good, but let's check and see if the other ones are incorrect and for what reason. Oh, so the second, the, the at reaction three has hydrogen plus sulfur gas. Well, what's sulfur going to be in its standard state? You might not recall this offhand, but think again. There aren't too many elements that actually occur as gases, and sulfur is not one of them, so that's not correct. And then um, the last choice has two hydrogen as atoms as opposed to H2 as a molecule. That is incorrect. So only answer one is correct to reflect the reaction forming sulfuric acid from elements in their standard states. Okay, so you can look up standard heats of formation for a variety of substances in a table. You can come back to this as needed, but in the examples that will work, the numbers will be provided right there in front of us. But know that they are in a chart for a variety of things, um, but there are larger charts elsewhere if you didn't find them here. All right, now let's see how we're going to use enthalpy changes, including standard heats of formation. I will make that into the next separate recording to keep these from getting too long.